So are you doing your job properly today, are you? Ollie, you're checking out everything. We got everything we need for today's video? I think we might have. I'm never a hundred percent though, am I? Let's be honest. But uh, I hope we've got uh, what we need. I one thing I'm actually missing now is a is a work area. I can't I can't make cards with you sat in the middle of it. I've just finished talking to everybody, but you are gonna have to move, okay? Not the Ollie show. I know I know you think it is. So hi there, it's it's Anne of Rosie Duck Designs here. Of course I have Ollie with me, um, and I have Jim with me doing a very good job as usual with the camera. So today we're actually going to do some crafting, which is going to be a welcome relief for me because um, January has not been a particularly crafting month as far as paper crafting is concerned. It's been quite creative as far as technology is concerned, which is a total nightmare for me. Um, so I've ended the day with a headache and a, a need to lie down in a darkened room. But at the end of it, I do have um, an updated blog, which I'm really pleased with. Um, so the stress I'm hoping has, has been worth it. And what I'd love you to do is to uh, pop over there and just have a look and I'd welcome any comments, good ones of course, <laughs> um, about what you think of the new layout. So I'll put a, a link to that um, on the front of the video as always. And I'll just talk a little bit about what else is available now via the, the home page as we go through the video. But we are going to feature not a ginger cat. Can we put it down? Up or down? Choice is yours. And preferably today. That would be good. Thank you so much. You don't need to look at the wall. You're not in the naughty corner. No, I actually want them there, but never mind. If you must. You're going, to, you're going to show everybody how to make it, are you? It's, this could be interesting. Right. We'll leave you. We'll see what you've created at the end. Okay? A mess. <laughs> so, if you saw my walk through the um, mini catalogue, you will have seen um, a card that I made using the From My Heart suite. I have to say that I love this suite and there's no pun intended it, it's just so pretty ideal for anniversaries weddings it's uh, i have to say um friends and family don't be surprised if all your anniversary cards are made with this because i i, I just love it it's such a pretty paper if you missed the walkthrough let's just run through the papers very quickly there's a lovely foil element to some of them not quite sure how that's coming out on this dull day, but uh, hopefully you can see that. Okay, we've got a foil on this one. It's a very rich foil look to that one. And it's a simple palette of colours. It's, it's basically flirty flamingo and real red. I have to say floaty flamingo I, I do like as a colour but I have to be honest and say that I don't use it that much. I think you go through phases with colours and I can remember using it quite a bit probably a year or so ago but I haven't really visited it recently and red probably isn't something that I work with that often so I, I love it when we get papers and then I'm challenged to use products that I don't normally use. The only downside to that is the fact that I revisit some ink pads and discover that they're slightly worse for wear and I really need to either re-ink them or buy a new one. So I can give you an idea how old my real rig is, it's the old version. So little bit worse for wear but it will work for just what we want for today. 
So I'm going to make, as I said, a keep that open. <laughs> I'm going to make an anniversary card. Now the one that I showed you on the walkthrough video I actually had as a base background whisper white. I thought I'd just mix it up a bit today and use the flirty flamingo. As usual, it's cut at six by eight, scored at four on the long side to give me my base card. Then I've got two pieces of real red card cut at five and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then I've got a piece of the designer series paper cut at three and a half by five and a half. And a piece of whisper white, again cut at three and a half by five and a half. So if we start to stick the card together, I've got less pieces of card to get confused with. So I don't know if snail is your preferred um, adhesive, it's certainly mine and I love how easy it is to change it when it runs out. So you buy basically the complete unit to start with and then thereafter you can buy it refills. They're very easy thing to put together. I deliberately did this today because I thought sometimes we just take things for granted but if you're just starting out you might wonder oh how did that how did that happen? I just realised I'm actually covered in crap now. <laughs> just a little brush down. <clears throat> we could spend our entire lives um, brushing these cats. Is that your sum total of joining in, Ollie, was it? Come back to sleep. It's good to see you were taking your job a little bit more seriously today, wasn't it? Not a lot, but a little bit. So I'm just sticking this... on top of the base card just so I've got a border as usual down the outside and I'm going to take my designer series paper and I'm going to work in the portrait, no, not in the portrait style, the landscape style with this. Because of what I want to add to it, you need that um, area to work with. So we're working with the card in that um, style. So there's my piece of paper, sorry, my piece of card that is going to house my sentiment. So I'm going to use the, without the cat hair, I'm going to use this heartfelt um, stamp set which coordinates with the heartfelt um, punches. So it's these two punches. So these punches will coordinate with the various stamps in this stamp set and you can buy that as a bundle and that costs £43. Alternatively, if it's just the punches that you're after, then you can just buy those. They come as a pair, but you can actually buy those for a £32. Very pleased this time with the new catalogue to see um, some new punches added. Uh, I do love a punch and I think they're especially, they're great even if you've got a big shop, but they're particularly useful if you haven't because it just does help you add some some layering to your cards. 
So I'm going to use this tiny little heart stamp. And I'm going to use the little glove stamp. I have to say there is very little stamping going on with this particular card. Although I'm going to do a little bit of heat embossing on the front. So because I've got um, the two colours of real red and flirty fl flamingo. Bit of a mouthful that isn't it? Flirty, <laughs> flirty flamingo. Um, I'm going to use both of those colours on the inside of the card. This is probably a dangerous move. But... One day I'm going to have one of those lovely craft rooms where it's all all spread out before me. <laughs> I can dream, can't I? <laughs> we don't really need a sitting room, do we? <laughs> I could just put it all in there. Right, so there we go. So I'm going to put a little red heart over in this corner. And I'm going to put a little red heart over in that corner. While I've got the red heart, I'm going to do the same thing on the envelope. And then I'm going to close that up for safety, because we all know what I'm capable of. And then I'm using my chamois just to clean off my stamp. And then I'm taking, again, the little heart, and I'm using Flirty Flamingo. And I'm just going to put that just going in the opposite direction alongside the little red heart. I did actually mean to put I meant to put one on this side as well. Those um, puzzles where you have to, to spot the what's wrong with it, you know, the two different pictures. So my videos are a bit like that, aren't they? I'll spot what she's done wrong now. Right, there we go. Just to even it up a little bit on the envelope. So the flirty flamingo is going away. The little heart is finished with. I'm just going to take the little love stamp no I'm not going to do that I remember this from the last card that I've, it's got like a little comma after it so I'm not going to do that I'm going to use a different stamp yeah I have to say it came back to me when just as I stamped that down, which I'm glad I did, after the love, it's got a little comma. So it's almost you put love and then maybe a comma and, and a name or something. It, it didn't quite work for the what I want to use it for. So it's always good to use your grid pad to check your stamp and check that your brain's actually in gear. In my defence, it's a very small comma, and initially I thought, oh, I've, uh, I've picked up a bit of ink where I shouldn't, but uh, no, it's actually on the stamp. So we're going with this one, we're going with this little one here. So I just want something a little bit delicate. And I'm going to put that just in the middle of the envelope, just to pretty that up. And I'm going, sorry, the other way around. And I'm just going to put one of those in the middle of the inside piece of whisper white that's going on the inside of the card. I'm going to close up my ink and then I'm going to stick this piece of card into the inside of my card. Making sure I've got the card the right way up. Always a plan. 
I'm just centralising that again in the middle. So I've got a bit of a border going on. And that's basically the inside of my card. I'm going to leave, just leave that um, to write the message on. I'm going to come back and add something here, but we're going to just do the front first. So what I'm going to do with that is take a piece of the design series paper. And what I really love about this paper is the fact that you can very carefully cut between the two the two lines of hearts using your paper trimmer you can actually cut so that you save all of the hearts quite often with um, designer series paper where it will coordinate with a punch you can't save every single piece of paper if that makes any sense so with this one if you notice this will coordinate with this heart. Oh. Sorry, am I doing something I shouldn't? Yeah. Paper by accident. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it helps if you tell me what I've done wrong because I'm like, what? What have I done? <laughs> I'm not understanding the hand signals. <laughs> so. You've probably got a good view of that paper then. Um, if you notice with this one, it's slightly overlapped. So if you can imagine, if you're drawing a, a line down here, you're just going to clip the hearts. So it's not possible to literally use all of the hearts on this piece of paper. With this one, you can, if providing you cut it very carefully. So. I'm taking this, this one coordinates with this punch, so this is the crinkled edge, edge punch. And I want a red one and a floaty flamingo. So I'm just going to make sure I've got that lined up. There's a good guide there with is that piece of punch above that white dot and turning it round I want a flirty flamingo so again I've lined that piece of the punch above that little white dot I also want a piece of this one. Let me shut back up. And here's one I've, this one I, I made earlier. And that will coordinate with this punch. So again, this is a really handy element of that punch because if you centralise Piece above the middle of your heart, then you're not going to go far too far wrong. Just pulling the bottom over slightly. So that is actually going to go on the envelope. Obviously, works really well with the paper, but will work equally well with some card. And just, it doesn't have to be a heart design paper. You could. Can see that that would be a really good addition to um, your crafting supplies. So I'm going to add the red heart on there and then I'm going to put the flirty flamingo one just above it. But I want to make sure that I'm leaving enough room over here for my um, sentiment which is basically going to be three of these uh, layered layering oval dies. So with these, you'll have seen me use these loads and loads of times. I love these because you've got the straight edges and you've got the crinkle edges. 
So that's going to be the biggest one. So what I want to make sure before we stick these down, that I've got enough room over here, which I have, so that's good. If you're sitting there saying, well, that's all very well, but I don't have a big shot. The alternative to that is one of the punches, one of the label punches. Now, this is the ti timeless label punch, but there's lots of different label punches available in the catalogue. I've chose this one because I quite liked the um, shape of it and it was fairly similar to the to the idea of the oval and that costs just £17. I've pre-cut a couple of colours out so this is the um, size of it so again that would work equally well over there without the need for having a big shot. Now I went to stamp happy anniversary on that using my white ink only to find that it had totally dried out so I um, apart from the fact I might have to buy some more I've just literally flipped that over and I've written happy anniversary in a white gel pen um, I've, I've tried to follow the line but you get the gist so if you imagine that if that was white ink that would work really well or alternatively I've stamped out um, a label in flirty flamingo and I've um, stamped that using the real red ink. So it's not the end of the world. Punches work just as well, and that would give you a really pretty sentiment to add to your card. As I said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do um, or use my big shot. And for that, I need a piece of flirty flamingo and a piece of real red and I'm going to cut out the largest piece in real red and the small and the middle piece so I've got a crinkled edge in um, real red a smooth edge in flirty flamingo and then this one is going to be for my sentiment so I, I might I think I might actually do my embossing first. <laughs> I, I can see the, you can see the brain ticking over, can't you? Right. Okay, let's do some embossing. I'm grabbing my very uh, favourite beautiful bouquet stamp set because it has all these sentiments in that I tend to use so much, particularly the happy anniversary. That's very well used, this, uh, this poor stamp, as you can see. So I've got a piece of um, real red card here and I'm going to emboss it. This is part of the reason why my, my white ink pad has run out and I haven't realised because in all honesty if I like if I'm going to add white writing to anything I tend to emboss it and um, it just gives it that um, just that nice raised texture and if we're going to emboss anything the first thing we need is our embossing buddy. So that is um, going to stop powder sticking where we don't want it to stick. We just want it to stick to the actual sentiment. Pressing that on nice and firmly. I say it uh, so well used this porcelain. With my versa mark. True to form, I have forgotten something, but that won't surprise you, will it? Do you know what that is? You turn it in with a nut at one end. Don't you want that? No, no okay. I wasn't, wasn't worried about that. Oh, no. no, what I've actually forgotten is my piece of spare paper that I'm going to then put all my embossing powder over. Have I got anything I can use up here? Okay. I'm improvising. <laughs> So I've got some white embossing powder. I'm just going to tip that over the area that I've got the Versa Mark stamp. And then I'm going to very carefully, I would normally use paper because it obviously bends so much easier, but that's fine. Ollie's not up there, so he can't stick his feet in the residue, so that's all good. 
always have to hand just a little paintbrush so you can just take off anything that you don't want to be on there but just be careful that you don't go near the bit that's actually the stamped area because you don't want to take any powder off of that then we want our embossing tool The light's fading. You normally see it as it takes the embossing, but I think that's fine. That's fine. you can see it change. But the lights, uh, the lights against we us. Saw you saw it, did you? Oh, that's good. As long as one of us can see it. <laughs> so that's my sentiment done, and I'm going to be in, um, cutting that out now using the smallest one of my layering oval dies. Now I want to keep that in its place, so I'm going to add. It's quite a tight fit this, so I don't want it moving as it goes through my big shot. So I'm just putting a piece of um, post-it note across there. So I'm using my magnetic platform. I don't wish to sound boring, but again, if you're watching this for the first time, these are dangerous if you or anyone that's going to come anywhere near to it has a pacemaker. So you, of course, would know any, a lot more about that than I would, but it's even got a warning on, on the side here. So you would just use your normal platform um, there's not a problem with that. I tend to just work with this most of the time because it does help to keep your dies in place as you push them through. But when it's this tight a fit, even with my magnetic platform, I'm not taking any chances. I'm just going to make sure that it doesn't move by putting that post-it note on it. I'm just going to push that through. And normally I don't have my big shop on a wonky surface like this. I normally keep it on a flat surface but we're not doing a lot so sometimes it's just nice to see what's going on now this one I'm not I've got not got anything um, happening with this one at all so it doesn't matter if it moves I'm going to finish up with an oval whatever happens so I'm not going to worry about a piece of uh, post-it note with that I'm just going to run that through that's my second layer. And this is my third layer. So I've just made a sandwich up. If you're not familiar with the big shot, I've got my base uh, my my magnetic plate then I've got my acrylic plate the bottom plate I've got my piece of card that I'm die cutting I've got my die face down because that's the cutting edge is underneath and I've made a sandwich with my um, top acrylic plates and then I'm just running that through my big shot and if that was a, a more intricate die then you could run it backwards to make sure you cut out um, more of, you know, make sure more of the detail is cut out. There's also um, different plates that you can add to your big shot as well, which if you're doing very delicate, intricate dies, makes far more sense than ploughing on with your magnetic platform. But for today, that's all I need. Let me just put that on the floor. Like a bit of weightlifting going on there. Away. So I'm going to put my little sentiment together. So that's my top one. Uh, 
and there's very little um, difference between the sizes so we've just got to carefully place this just so that we're getting an element of the colour all around the oval you're not going to see very much at all but we do just want to see some colour tends to take longer than the whole card just lining up at this corner before I let it completely um, fall down just that slight twitch in your hand and it's gone there we go so by just laying it down on the, the top corner here without really letting it fall it's not going to stick until you push it down so that's the first bit and then we're going to add that to this bit and again there isn't going to be a lot of room so I'm just steadying it up here doesn't have to be it's not perfection we're looking for but we just want to be able to see the red the flirty flamingo and the red and just getting that element all the way around the sentiment so that's going to finish up on there but we need to stick the hearts on first so I'm going to stick the red heart on on the bottom so this is as we've established paper and that's going to stick well on top of the other piece of paper so we'll go with the red one there, just slightly off straight. But then I want the flirty flamingo one to just be on top of it and be raised above. So I'm going to be using stamping dimensionals for that. Now that in itself is quite flimsy to, um, it's fine with the stamping dimensionals, but it, it's not going to have a lot of substance with it as a layer so if you take the heart that's got the smooth sides and grab a piece of it doesn't have to be flirty from Ringo but I've got the piece here just cut out a heart from that and what we're going to do is just stick that this the, this heart is smaller than that heart So we can stick the smooth heart underneath that um, heart that's been cut out of the designer series paper and it will give it that um, substance to be, uh, enable it to stick a lot better on top of the card and not to um, get damaged. So I'm just going to stick that on here. We haven't got to be, um, it hasn't got to be perfect. All we don't want is it showing through round the sides. To that I'm going to add, if I can find some stamping dimensionals, three is going to be enough for that. And I'm just going to put the floaty flamingo heart just moving slightly across from uh, central to left, my left this way, um, and it's just overlapping the red one very slightly. Then taking my sentiment that we've already made up, I'm going to attach that to the front of the card, again using some stamping dimensionals. And we're just going to put that over here in the middle, not in the middle, but in the, this area over here towards the bottom. Now, you could just leave it like that. Perfectly nice, adequate card. But you can step it up just a little bit by adding a little bit of interest on this um, inside. 
Um, what's the word? <laughs> Not this bit, this bit where, uh, where you don't write. Page two of the card. <laughs> and I'm going to use one of the little doilies. So the doilies, again, are, are part of this from the Heart Suite. And they're heart doilies and they cost £5 and you get 40 doilies. Again, if you saw the video um, introducing the catalogue, you will have seen that they coordinate with the heart foil tins, which is a whole new different video, which we're not going to go there today. But they're great for your cards, great for those tins. They come in 30 flamingo and real red. Very, very pretty. And you can flip them over, they're white, so you can use them as a white heart, or you can add some colour using um, a sponge sprayer. Very, very versatile. And I just thought if I stick a red heart in there, it gives it a little bit of detail, and you've again got this um, coordination of the two colours going on the flirty flamingo and the real red. Now, I don't want the glue showing through the little holes on here, so I'm just going to Put a bit of glue just in the centre, but I'm going to make sure I've got a reasonable amount of glue in there because I don't obviously want it to fall off. I'm just going to basically put that above my little heart sentiment here, so it just makes it a little bit more special as they open the card. On a final, what I should have done, and I have to admit I forgot. Right. heart fasted gems I was like shall I shan't I and then I, I was going to and then I totally forgot to order them so I'm going to put them on my list but I don't have them at the moment so what I used on the other card was three little hearts from my dog punch my dog builder punch so again just a, a random piece of um, real red card And normally I've, uh, I can be quoted as saying, if it's a, an anniversary card or something, whilst you would normally do your embellishments in odd numbers, I tend to, because it's an anniversary wedding, whatever, it's a couple, so I tend to go with um, even numbers. But actually it looked silly with too many of these hearts. So I am actually just going to add three of these little hearts. Not necessary, but just a little bit more. And detail. So I'm just going to grab glue dots. Glue dots are quite reasonably sized, um, so rather than take the element that I'm sticking to the glue dot as you would normally, I've actually just peeled that off and I've placed it where I want it. What I probably should have done is just decided where I wanted these to go before I stuck them. There's going to be one down here. It's always a plan really, isn't it? Sure, we actually need three in this one. It's, uh... <laughs> I might go back to my let's just have two. I don't know. This is why it's better to place them before you start sticking. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think of that? Is that all right? Do you like that? No, what do you want? You only want two, right? Okay, I actually agree with you. Oh, what about that? You like that, yeah. It's funny, the other card I made, I think, I don't know if these were slightly placed, but three worked. So forget all that. I'm going back to my two, two's company and all that. It's funny though, isn't it? Where you just place something slightly differently and it doesn't work the same. This is why cards are always individuals, even if you're using a very similar format. Right there, happy with that? 
There we go. So that is our finished card. We got there with our envelope. So it's a lovely um, suite, I have to say, and, and I know that I, it's going to be well used um, over the coming months. But I will try and change it up so that not everybody gets the same um, anniversary card. But I was thinking, um, again, I, I highlighted the stamp set that's for the one for invitations. And I was thinking these, this would be a very easy card to um, make in bulk, really, if it was if an invitation to perhaps an engagement party or something like that. So great paper to have. So just before I go, um, as I was saying, I've updated my blog. So when you go onto uh, my blog now, you will see that there is a sidebar and there's various images on there. There's um, somewhere you can click on to just find out more about us and um, you know, if, if that's of any interest. But there are three cute pictures of three cute cats on there, so probably worth a look. <laughs> and, and, um, so, yeah, as I was saying, um, it introduces the other two to you a bit better. Um, but more importantly, there's a direct link. So there's an image of the catalogue with Ollie, of course, um, and you press on that and that will take you straight to my online shop. But also you can, if you click on any of the other images, so there's um, the annual catalogue, the mini catalogue, the celebration brochure and the little creativity brochure, which is particularly aimed at those just starting out um, on their paper crafting journey. If you just click on any of those images, you can download a PDF um, of those catalogues. Um, along the top, you've got a contact me button, a join my team button and you can also access all my social media platforms as well. So there will be less links on the front, so there'll be my blog, but I will also put the link to my website. Also on my blog where I'm highlighting um, products, you'll notice a change because as you click on an image, um, it will take you straight to basically a shopping list that you can add to your cart. And then you can, if you wish, add more items to it remove items that sort of thing just to make it a little bit more easier to shop particularly when we're talking about um, a specific pro project sorry product that we've used for a project so i hope that all makes sense but do please go and give it a look um i've, I've learned an awful lot in the, the last uh, couple of weeks so um i'm hoping you'll notice an improvement and it's more of a, a user friendly um, and a prettier environment as always, everything that I've used today can be purchased by my online shop, so um, just head over there. I will put as normal my link to the shop as well on here, but it can be accessed in, in various places. So I'm going to carry on with the theme of um, using some of the new products in the next video. So it will probably be the Poppy Suite because I've got a, a card in mind that I'm going to make for a friend. So. Do come back and join me for that. Um, in the meantime, thanks ever so much for joining us today. So uh, from Sleeping Beauty over there, I think that's as good as it's going to get. I'll say goodbye on your behalf, Ollie. <laughs> so it's goodbye from Ollie, goodbye from Jim, goodbye from me. Until next time, do take care. Bye bye. So having said goodbye to you all, I've I picked up the envelope and realised I hadn't quite finished it off and you're probably sitting there wondering what on earth did she bother cutting that other heart out for if she had no intention of using it. So out of this paper I have just cut out, as you saw, a heart and I'm just going to stick that on the back of the envelope just to pretty up the envelope and to carry on that heart theme. And it's kind of picking up the little element that we've stamped inside as well so we've got hearts with this element going round it so i will put a note on the end of the video that i've added to it i'm um, sorry at the front of the video that i've added to it so i hope you pick that up but I'll, I'll perhaps add it into um a picture somehow so that you can see what i did with it so it is a final goodbye now and i will see you next time bye bye <laughs>